So to begin with, I got a brand new tool. Ta-da! So I need to learn how to regrade for water drainage, a concrete slab, and potentially some foundation work. So the reason we're here with this thing is the price. It's 225 bucks. It does not come with the grade rod and it does not come with a tripod. So I had to buy that, that's an extra 50 bucks. And tripod's probably another 50 if you don't have one. Honestly, that's my camera tripod, so I don't know if it's gonna work with this system. This was the cheapest version of this tool that I could find that was self-leveling. I actually own a bunch of Bosch laser tools and that was generally my preference, but the Bosch version of this is $700. And I think that is the lower end of commercial grade and the very upper end of consumer grade. I just didn't have the money. What I'm hoping here is that this tool is accurate, but maybe not as durable as the more expensive versions. Because if it's not accurate, it's no longer a measuring tool, it is instead a paperweight. Right off the bat, we've got some issues. Although, whoever wrote this, their English is better than my Mandarin. However, number three, mode indicator. When it lights, the instrument is leveling manually. When it winks, it stays in alarm. The slope of the instrument is out of range. Oof. We're gonna have to experiment. Four C size rechargeable, but I put the batteries in the case according to the right electrode. Uh oh, C batteries. We're gonna have to time travel. Well, I can tell you right now, that's not gonna fit my tripod. Maybe it's got a an adapter. Otherwise, we're gonna be investing no money. And I want to feel like it's heavy enough to have batteries in it. I power it up. Hey, you powered up. So that means it's got some kind of power system in it, which is great because I don't know where I was going to get C batteries because we're in the future. Leveling range plus or minus five degrees. So you got to get it pretty close. This isn't very helpful, but I think we can figure it out. What you get with the kit, space goggles, the thing that goes on your charger, scanner thing, remote control, and whatever this doohickey is. It comes with a necklace and a key. And it comes with this fancy, what looks like a cheap makeup case. This thing feels pretty cheap, but I guess that's because it is pretty cheap. It's okay if it works. All right, so I did find some instructions on how to check the accuracy on this. The idea is you set this out in the field 50 meters from some surface or a place that you can stand with your grade stick, check the height, spin the unit 180 degrees, and then check the height again. And if it's within 10 millimeters over 50 meters, you're styling. And I think that's more than accurate enough for the types of projects I'll be doing here. The issue that I'm running into right now is I have a standard camera tripod, quarter 20 cold shoe attachment here. This feller has something big and honking. All right, so I just hit it on. So hopefully it's doing something. It's not spinning, so maybe Maybe I need the instructions. It's not that hard. He doesn't have a clue. So I'm getting decidedly frustrated with this machine. All right, guys, after many, many hours of tinkering and trying to understand this device and being frustrated with the directions because they're just not clear, discount device. So now I'm starting to believe that it goes into automatic mode as soon as you turn it on. You have to select manual, and when it lights up, it's in manual mode. But I think this button right here just lets it do its thing, and then when I shake it, it freaks out and stops the laser real fast-like, and lets me know that it's shaking. <laughs> Apparently all you gotta do is press the power button. That's why they sent me, I am an expert. And it will seem to do its own thing within five degrees. Yeah, I mean, maybe the tool is just a lot simpler than the instructions let on. It's that simple. Uh, basically, when you turn it on, it takes a minute to think. That led me to believe I needed to select a thing for it to do, but that's not true. As soon as you fire it up, it'll think for a second, it'll self-level, and it'll go. Unless you select manual mode as an on-top addition, or select don't shake me mode, it's just going to do its thing. That's it. Just turn it on. Gee whiz. We're gonna try one last test. I'm about 130 feet, according to my Bosch laser shooter router thing, at this telephone pole. I'm gonna go set up the stick. We're gonna try doing our calibration test one more time and see how accurate it is now that we kinda know what we're doing. Round 200. Fire it up, let's see if it'll start to spin. There we go. Okay. 
Great googly moogly. All right, we got tone. It's dialed in and screaming at us. I'm just gonna leave it there. We're gonna go spin the laser 180 degrees and see if it just starts to holler. Because if it does, that means it's pretty accurate over 130 feet with its self-leveling kind of situation mechanism by just hitting the power button for crying out loud. That's all it took. All right, here we go. I freaked it out enough. We're 180 out and change. When it spins, if we hear a tone, let's just watch it. The beeping means it's very close. Let's see what we have to adjust to actually get a tone then. All right, it says we gotta go up. I mean, it's less than an eighth. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how a small victory can just completely change your attitude. So this thing was accurate within an eighth of an inch over, it's gotta be about 130 feet. That's great. That we, we have confirmed it. We spun it 180 degrees like the test said. We just had to ignore all the other directions. So after the final test of us actually being able to check if the self-leveling spinning at 180 degrees works, I now trust this thing's accuracy more than I trust myself to hold this grade rod perfectly plumb every time. So this thing is 225 bucks. You gotta buy the rod and you gotta buy the tripods. So I decided I had to do one more test before I put it away. I pulled it out and just turned it on. And it is propped up so that it is decidedly beyond its five degrees of self-leveling. And it's been like that for a minute and it will not spin. If I put it there, let it sit. There it goes. I was just about to give up on it, but there it went. What a simple device after all of that, all of it. So it took me a lot of experimenting to figure it out, but it does seem to be working. It passed its own test, which is great news. A couple weeks ago, I was out here with the mini skid steer trying to regrade this driveway so that it did not flow water towards the house. Well, today I'm actually going to try to learn how to read grade. And everything I think I know about the subject, I learned from one Dirt Monkey YouTube video. Let's see if we can do it. So this thing has a lot of functions I do not understand, but the most basic function is it sends a laser 360 degrees. The other half of this tool is this receiver. And this thing is designed to make a really loud tone and help you get the laser lined up with this green line, which corresponds to this point on the clip, which corresponds to the gray rod that you have it attached to. So as you wander around, the laser will stay at one height. And as you walk around with your stick, you can get different heights from the ground. So there are a few basic principles that get repeated in the Dirt Monkey video because he is actively teaching one of his employees how to do this for the very first time. And I'm gonna boil those down for you because I basically needed a checklist of how to do this so I can learn to do it myself. Step one, put your laser somewhere that you do not have to move it to hit every area you want to measure. You need a direct line of sight from this thing to every point where you're gonna take a measurement. So from back here, I can take the slab of the house, the edge of the driveway, the far edge of the driveway, the fence, can swing back over and get this high spot over here and see how this is, at which point we'll have measurements for the height of all of those places relative to the height of this laser. And once we get it going, we don't move it. This thing messes with you. If you look at it, it's like watching paint dry, water boil, all the things you wouldn't expect. I turn the camera off and there she goes. She started spinning. So she is running which means it has leveled itself based on this tripod situation well enough. It takes a couple seconds, like many seconds, half a minute, 30 seconds. Next, get a benchmark. We're gonna use this concrete slab as the benchmark. Obviously that laser needs to hit this stick. When I get a solid tone, I know I'm in the money and there's a graphic display. It's telling me to go up. There we go. 
now. All right, that's it. Turn the van off. So right now I am at four foot, 10 inches even, which means the laser line to the ground is four foot 10. And because we're going from the laser line to the ground, the larger the measurement, the lower the ground is relative to the laser. So the higher this is, the lower the grade. It just, it makes sense if you think you're measuring down. So now I'm at four foot 10. I should write that down somewhere. What that tells us is from here to where we started cutting, we raise elevation nine and a quarter inches. From the part where we cut in to the far side of that, we dropped an inch and a quarter. And a rule of thumb that I learned from the Dirt Monkey channel is you wanna drop one inch over every eight feet for watershed. That was his rule of thumb. Sounds good to me, I don't have another number. Because that's an eight foot grade rod, that does mean that this particular area from the uphill side to the downhill side toward the house, we actually were able to get it to grade a little bit away. I will consider that success from the old eyeball. I'll fire up the laser so you can see how this works a little more close up. I realized while I was using this thing that I can put my grade rod this way and I can see the back of the receiver unit and the receiver can still receive the laser. You gotta loosen the screw. Slide it down, and it gives you arrows up and down. Down. There you go. It is worth noting that if you lean it, you're gonna get inaccurate measurements. So there you go, the tool works. Uh, I think for the price point for something new, it's the best I could possibly find, and it is accurate. Longevity, durability, don't know yet. So I'll put a link to the Dirt Monkey video. I really appreciate them taking the time to make that video because it's helpful for a guy like me. Putting in all those basic starting points was a huge help. Let's just go over them one more time. One, make sure that the laser is somewhere that you can see the entire area that you're trying to measure because that goes hand in hand with Cardinal rule number two, don't move the laser. Once you've moved it, you have changed your fundamental starting point and you are measuring from that laser line down. So if you move the laser, you gotta start all over. Then because you're measuring from the laser line down, your grade rod to earth, the higher the number, the lower the earth is. And then last but not least, if you're looking for a metric like I was, one inch over eight feet for basic watershed, sort of a 101 put it in your brain pan. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you, Dirt Monkey. We will see you next time on Between the Sharks.